Thanks, Anthil, Anurag, Nikhil for joining uh, us in this panel discussion. COVID-19 was just a beginning of a new world for all of us. It actually established that uncertainties are there. Uncertainties are going to be there for some time. There were times when uh, you had SARS and there was a certain economy that went through the roof. But this was a very different event. It actually told us that things are going to change. Things are not going to be the same as uh, they were. And the great thing is that all of you come with both a business and an IT responsibility uh, and an HR responsibility in your organization. So you have been in the center of the change, which is saying how while the business is getting impacted, as HR leaders, how do we look at things differently? How do we ensure that employees are engaged, employees are productive, employees are efficient, and at the same time, business is not getting impacted? So what we're going to discuss today is that while uncertainty is there, as a business leader, how do you think you or your organization reacted to an uncertainty or is going to react to an, an uncertainty like this if it comes again? So Anurag, you are also responsible for business continuity within Wipro. What was your experience? How did you react when the chairman of Wipro reached out to you and said, guys, there is a crisis and we have to do something about it? I mean, the first step, of course, was that uh, yeah, you know, when everybody had to kind of move home because there was a lockdown that was announced at almost like zero notice uh, period, uh, you know, and then we started thinking about moving of the assets. And uh, when we say assets, you know, the, the large chunk of people who were using desktops at that point of time, I don't think anybody would have imagined that you could actually ship a desktop to people's homes, uh, right, at a very short notice. And I think that was the first thing that we did that how do we make people enable to work from home? Uh, right, and that was the uh, first thing we did. Uh, obviously, people's safety was the most important element at our minds at that time. And we actually started moving home even one week before the prime minister uh, announced in uh, India. And the same thing around the same time across the globe, we started moving. Our first uh, important thing was that while the machines moved and we knew that people connected, the question there was that are people productive? Are they able to work from home? You know, is the connectivity good? Is the customer engagements are happening? And since there was at that short notice, there was nothing else available with us. So the simple thing we did was to do a quick survey with these guys. You know, we quickly put up a survey. First question was that, are you safe or you are not safe? The second question was, are you able to work? Uh, are you able to connect to the machine? Are you connecting from a personal device or a you know Wipro provided device or customer uh, engagement and you are able to do that? So. That is how we kind of started. The good news was that within the span of one week, you know, we were able to ensure that about 90% of the people were actually productive. You know, it's only the 10% which was, which was a gap that point of time. The second thing that we had to do was to make sure that the cyber security controls are put in place. Because a lot of customer confidential data was being, uh, you know, done from home. And obviously these people are not in their offshore development centers and things like that. And that became a big task for us uh, that how quickly can we put all the cyber security controls so that people are able to uh, uh, work securely uh, from that particular environment. And I think those were the initial uh, things that we had to do. Obviously there were, you know, once the first lockdown was over, there were a uh, uh, lot of things that we needed to take care of that people who had to work from office, the pro premises, right? Because there were certain engagements where the PII uh, data was uh, very confidential and Customers uh, had to make these guys work from the office, how to make the premises very safe for the individual. So even as we speak today, we have only less than 3% of our employee strength, which is working from Wipro offices globally, right? But for those 3% employees to ensure the safety of them became a big challenge because, uh, uh, you know, even if one person, uh, you know, has a, uh, is a suspected guy and he has some symptoms, you, know, you have to actually quarantine the entire floor and sometimes even the entire building. And that is where we started with going into things like uh, zoning concept that people who take the same. And uh, last point is that initially, while uh, customers were obviously okay that uh, if the services are provided, they were not so bothered about the productivity for the first few days. But then after a few days, the productivity started playing an important role, right? Because you have to be productive, your network connectivity has to be good. 
and all that thing and that is what became the focus and then you worked on it so now going back in time you know if you have to say i can tell a very beautiful story about how this whole engine worked but at that point if somebody had to ask you know how are you going to ensure that tomorrow i don't think anybody had an answer no business continuity in the world we had written like that yeah i think it's been uh, i'm sure it's a great experience to ensure that 200000 employees of wipro are safe and sound and are productive now uh, moving to your sense here i think the biggest asset that you have is your employees i have been to your campus in uh, chennai an amazing campus when all this hit uh, and people said okay corona is going to stay Uh, there is uncertainty how did uh, hexaware uh, react to this and as a business head at hexaware what was your reaction uh, to dealing with something like this so many of the steps we took would have been similar to what anurag mentioned but in our case rubber we had to do this too globally for all our employees working out of multiple campuses and also make sure that employees who worked at client locations are also taken care of because they were going through a similar situation as well in our case in the first 48 hours you know we were pretty much into a work from mode work from home switch over quite nicely 99% of the organization had moved quite seamlessly in the first one to two business days which was pretty good and very honestly no bcp in the past has ever thrown open the entire enterprise across all locations and put it through a stress test so this is pretty much the first time uh, i've seen in my career where every single facility had to go some do something similar but the switch over was thankfully quite smooth like i've just said you know did uh, the world think of laptops and everything for everyone initially no but i think those were in place but the most amazing thing was considering that employees were working from wherever they were at that point of time home first before the lockdown you know we had some relaxation and people actually further moved to their native home locations fact is the internet at home that they all used whatever it might have been seemed to have scaled up sustained and ensured that business continuity was never impacted uh it's not just the delivery you know when i put on my hat as clo even the ongoing learning and development programs for our trainees continued in a remote fashion and we have not seen any change the good news is that by and large it has been it has been a smoother affair and the feedback from the customers both in terms of continuity as well as you know ongoing productivity has been very positive so it was overall a pretty positive experience even though nobody has done it on this scale ever in the past thanks uh, adit nikhil you come from a pharma giant sun pharma uh, and the the score the scale uh, the priorities manufacturing everything is very different from it services uh, that uh, wipro and hexaware operate in how was uh, sun farmers reaction and somebody who was looking at to look after it and hr what was your way of dealing with it so uh, to both the points now uh, already made i think it was a pretty uh, unique event in itself so obviously you know you can't anyway plan for any business continuity or whatever so that i think that point has been made but i think i would like to say that you know you since you can't plan anything for this i think the agility is very critical right so how can you quickly respond to an event like this is you know the most important thing so what we did was uh, we made a cross functional team it was under the directly you know we were reporting to the md so so essentially you know we have a fairly good idea of what exactly happened at time so uh, like uh, you know uh, anurag said now it's you know we can on retrospect say it's job well done but at that point of time it was an extremely critical and a very arduous task to put it you know in a very mild terms because we are not an it company right so work from home is an anathema actually for us so you know it's something which has never really happened right so even on, we don't even have a work from home policy so to so to speak of so for us to go from a zero work from home to a 100% work from home i mean the sheer magnitude is kind of mind boggling so i think uh, laptops and uh, laptops are fine you know some quite a few of us had laptops and all that but uh, majority of our population actually works on desktops you now there are people who are sitting at you know corporate offices who are actually on desktops and things like that so Fine. I think we we figured out a way to move the desktops home, and you know, 
Uh, but then the connectivity is a challenge, right? And uh, especially in places like Mumbai, I think, you know, work from home also is a very big challenge because not all the homes are, you know, designed for, you know, work from home kind of situation, right? So now how do you then, uh, a desktop actually becomes a big, you know, burden on the employee, you know, sitting in the office or sitting at home. So now how do you not, you know, may, you know, do all these things and we have to buy some rental laptops, you know, so uh, we have to purchase some laptops. So, you know, it is a, so we have to mix and match all these things, right? So essentially the cross-functional team had to kind of do a lot of due diligence in terms of who are the employees, where are they staying, you know, what is the, how do we ship their, you know, la, you know the new laptops or the rental laptops, how do we ship their desktop? So a lot of, uh, you know, uh, logistics had to be planned around this. So I'm only talking about the corporate offices, but then there is the whole plant, you know, uh, people working at plant. So obviously, uh, like you rightly said, Sun Pharma is, is a pharma giant and you know, a lot, lot of expectation from, uh, you know, the uh, people of India and across the world, you know, about supply of medicines, right? And you can't stop that. And uh, some of the medicines which were being talked about, like, you know, hydrochloroquine and all things like that. So how, you have to keep manufacturing that, you know, you can't stop that. So how do you, you know, get production also, you know, uh, uh, not to be impacted as well as the supply chain not to be impacted. So a lot of, you know, uh, logistics, uh, you know, had to be planned. I think uh, plants were kind of, you know, closed for some days. Uh, so production obviously dipped and, you know, uh, that also reflects in the results uh, uh, overall from, from a company perspective as well. Uh, over a period of time, I think the lockdown restrictions began lifting and, you know, uh, employees were able to come. So then how do you ensure the safety of employees, right? So how do you ensure that, you know, the employees who come to work in plants, you know, how can they be safe, but yet maintaining the, you know, uh, social distancing and, you know, the production is not disrupted. So I think, so it is a fairly challenging, you know, task in itself, but uh, over a period of time, I think, you know, these challenges were, you know, overcome. So I remember, uh, Nikhil, I was actually, I had gone to the US for a, a business planning meeting and I landed in Bangalore on 1st of March. And I didn't know that while I was in the US for business planning meeting, I had to plan for business continuity when I come here. Uh, we had 1,000 employees based out of India. And I think we also went through the same journey of ensuring that everybody is at home. Our operations team actually physically took uh, laptops and screens and ensured that everybody uh, is uh, up and running. One thing that I think helped us and I think helped most of the organizations today was technology. Uh, so technology did play a critical role in ensuring that employees are taken care of. Uh, there's some employee centricity, there's employee engagement, but all this, at the same time, there were various things like you spoke about risk, uh, compliance, are the platform that we're using are strong in reporting because these were things yeah. that organizations were looking at, the business heads were looking at whether my employee is equally productive or not. And I think one of the theories that we adopted in our organization is that we'll close our offices till December end and said, and then the second step we did was looking at the productivity of employees. And to our surprise, we actually uh, came to know that employees were more productive working from home. Uh, and that is, I think most of the organizations have realized that and that's why they're saying that uh, we will continue to have some employees still work from home when uh, things become uh, normal. But in all of this, one thing which was critical was technology. So Santil, I'll start with you. Uh, do you think uh, how uh, technology actually helped us uh, or your organization uh, work more effectively, keep employees together, keep employees productive uh, in this uh, time of uncertainty? Okay. Technology has been a big impact in you know enabling function but obviously not the only one you know uh, it was supporting but a lot of other things had to be done i think the most obvious thing that technology did was making sure that connectivity and ongoing work was never impacted the bigger task another important task that had to be taken care of making sure that when employees are working in a different environment where they don't really come to office and working remotely how do you make sure that you stay connected with employees, right? So that is where a lot of other technology as well as, you know, processes had to be brought in, whether it was the much cliched webinars or other, you know, employee engagement activities had to be brought in to make sure that nobody felt disconnected from the organization or I would say their colleagues, friends in office, etc. 
and that doesn't stop you know it is an ongoing activity that through a variety of tools uh, technology that we continue to put in place to make sure that the spirit of the exavarian the motivation stays as a beat as it always was regardless of whether they came to office or did a work from home in the long term i think you know some parts of it may stay but many of the good things that were put together invented thought of during this time i'm sure would also come in handy uh, for long time thanks anil uh, anurag uh, apart from bcp you were also head of talent transformation at wipro at this time uh, and especially because you're dealing with people how important was to ensure uh the employees are updated up to date on the latest technology their skills are being developed their competencies are high so that when they go back to customer locations they are equally productive so how did technology help in ensuring that uh, the talent is transformed uh, to the level that uh, your customers would expect the technical training uh, you know became a very important uh, element because suddenly in march may you know the recruitment had to be like almost become almost zero you know uh, any new recruitment and and to that extent all the open demands that were there from the customers the people uh, some of the projects which had run down and you had to move people it became important that can we supply those competent people onto those new reskill areas and just to tell you, you know we had uh, the timing was such that we had just migrated over to the new some total uh, uh, platform on 16th of march was the go live date actually and that was the day when lockdown started and you know our uh, volumes of training in the first quarter actually went up by 40% almost it just just one quarter itself and the number of people who joined uh, the platform uh, became very high then we started looking at you know what are the open demands that were there and what reskilling had to happen so we put up a task force which uh, started looking at uh, people giving them uh, not only the training but the hands on assignments Uh, creating them ready, and so that you start fulfilling the demand through reskilling. And the other thing was that while all these trainings and reskilling is happening, it all had to happen remotely, right? So while on our uh, you know uh, the the skills of platform people had to do e-learning, but when we started running a lot of virtual uh, uh, training uh, by the by the faculty members, we create virtual labs for people, and through the virtual labs, people were able to do all those hands-on assignments and all. Uh, and then you know we use tools like microsoft teams for example you know that the total number the total usage of the tool became almost 12 times within just one quarter itself uh, in terms of the me- meeting minutes which were there and run so obviously the technology infrastructure to create that level of bandwidth where people are able to get that uh, that done thanks uh, look nikhil like i said you are pharma is a, is one uh, industry where uh, both downstream and upstream got impacted hugely while everybody was thinking that pharma is one industry which will only grow 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 but not many people uh, actually uh, realize that both upstream and downstream are getting impacted uh, for you technology becomes important uh, because uh, one you have everything runs in technology but also because everything that you manufacture today has so uh, has to get approved Right, the US FDA is a big thing right. in your industry, uh, and technology does play a critical role in ensuring that whatever that you produce, people who are producing it uh, follow a particular pattern, which right. is approved by US FDA. How did you? How did technology uh, play a pivotal role in your environment? You know, the whole work from home scenario itself was a new thing for us. So I think uh, you know the. laptops desktops i think internet people mentioned you know uh, uh, can we have proper connectivity so even some of the applications were you know not uh, kind of optimized for that kind of uh, you know home setup kind of thing so we also had to tweak some you know, application parameters as well to optimize it so that people can actually use it from home so you know so things like that you know also we had to look at right so technology that way i think you know uh, so i'll give you a couple of more perspectives i think what have also happened was during the month of march april which is our budgeting cycle as well i think one of the trigger points probably also was to you know can we actually even look at our overall technology spend you know and see can we how can we optimize it right so while that was always there but now i think this is also an important trigger point for us to justify some of these projects that we are doing so and i think you know so that is also an important thing for us so 
from a overall IT team perspective, you know, can we really say what are the business benefits that that are going to come out from these projects, right? So it is not that I'm just doing some fad kind of a thing, right? So just because there is some artificial intelligence tool available, I'm just going to deploy it and then we'll see what happens, you know, that that kind of a thing. So, but can we really quantify, you know, what is going to come out of these these, you know, tools or these technologies? So I think. That was also an important, you know, uh, uh, I will say, uh, uh, thing that we did. So today, pretty much, you know, most of the projects that we are doing uh, this year, we're actually trying to quantify the benefits of those projects. I think that's an important, you know, mind shift that has happened. So to add to the technology a bit, I think uh, we did do a couple of more, you know, you know, innovation kind of projects. And I think, you know, the whole idea of sitting at home, you know, you obviously can't sign, for example, documents, right? So now we had to introduce, you know, things like digital signatures and, you know, on a much more larger scale, right? So uh, how can you, you know, sign invoices sitting at home or, you know, how can you sign up contracts sitting at home? So you know, those things are now, we're not there before. So, you know, so leaders can sit at home, you know, use the, use the digital signatures and, you know, sign up. So things like this, you know, th this is how, you know, um, some of these, uh, you know, uh, small projects we undertook so that, you know, the process becomes simple, but at the same time can be done sitting at home. So I think you know, I just wanted to call out some of those, you know, nuances. Very well said, Nikhil. Uh, we, being from the IT, IT services organization, we somehow sometimes think these are basic things, right? Digital yeah. signature and all that. But in a, in a manufacturing setup, uh, people are kind of used to working in a particular way for the last 20, 30 years. Right. And I think there's a huge change management that is required. So taking a cue from that, uh, to coming to you, Sethan, things are going to be same, things are going to change, we don't know. But one thing is going to be there that I think organizations will be more uh, proactive than reactive as we move forward. Uh, there will be more reason, uh, resilience. Uh, there will be more stricter norms on how we deal with certain uncertainties. How do you think uh, things are going to span out, say, I'm hoping, say, January 2021, uh, when everything becomes normal, there's people say that, okay, there's a vaccine, everybody's safe. What do you think? How would you like to see uh, the way forward? I think certainly at some point when things go under control, there will be a return back to office. Now, whether it is going to be 100% will be as before or some kind of a staggered, you know, on a roastering basis or some X percentage will opt to work from home forever. We don't know. It's too early to tell what the directions will be. But I would think that some parts of it in terms of working remotely, I wouldn't say work from home, working remote, probably will become a new norm. Anurag, uh, I always see you've been at the, whether you liked it or not, but business continuity means an action man, right? You've been part of an action more than anybody else. Now this is going to be a reverse business continuity. What is your thoughts on it? One thing, you know, I just want to build on Sentil's idea of this work from anywhere concept, right? See, this work from anywhere actually has eased a lot in our minds today. That now with this worst of the pandemic that you could have done, you know, if, if you have like 97, 98% of your organization able to work remotely, organization of our size of 180,000, uh, it becomes very easy going forward for us to uh, to say that yes people can work anywhere but let's assume that you have to come back after the pandemic gets over and you know slowly over a period of time 100% uh, people can come back uh, i don't think 100% people will come back right because a very creative business models have been created with work from anywhere where teams are now no longer saying this is a bangalore project or a chennai project it's like a project where you have team members anywhere there is a value of social interaction that takes needs to take place. And to that extent, we would still encourage, let's say, people to be working from the city of work, you know, rather than everybody working remotely from their hometowns, because you don't have the luxury that even if the teams have to meet once a week or once a month, they have to collect together, they should be at some place. They should be at a place where the internet connectivity is uh, good enough uh, in the city. Obviously, government regulation will play a part. Uh, today, it is only till 31st December, but... You know, as we are working with the government authorities that if work from anywhere concept is something that the government is able to implement, then definitely the life will become easier. Yeah, I think yeah, one of I think that's what it's also brought a lot of innovation in the way we are looking at people, uh, technology, like uh, Nikhil said, innovation is important, but we also have to weigh pros and cons. Does innovation come at a huge cost or not? 
I'm sure uh, it's going to be a good roller coaster for you, Anna. Again, business continuity when uh, things become normal. Nikhil, coming to you, uh, as uh, what do you think? How will a pharma industry and some pharma in particular yeah. uh, behave differently when things become okay? There has been it's been a huge change management uh, right now, and it's going to be a bigger change management when things yeah. become okay. Also managing, like I said, uh, upstream and downstream. How do you see things uh, changing for you? No, I think, uh, I mean, nobody knows the answer to these questions. I think it, so that's why I, I initially also said that, you know, that agility is going to be very important. And you know, how do you respond to situations and, you know, how do you, you know, you can't really plan out some of these things, you know, so nobody knows, you know, these trends or whatever, you know, and uh, we can't really, you know, start planning for it. Um, Whatever you know, the uh, whatever say uh, Anurag was mentioning about from a Wipro perspective, something that we've already done. So, what kind of roles you know can uh, work from home? What kind of roles need to come to office? So that kind of a you know uh, role mapping to employee mapping kind of things already been done. So I think that is that is fairly clear, you know. So, but at the same time, there will be a need maybe for some employees to come to office. But again, you know, those are very, very, uh, you know, specialized kind of a, like, you know, somebody in the data center who needs to, you know, uh, do certain activities, you know, which can't be done from home, right? So, you need to physically manage, say, some tapes or whatever, those backups of tapes or whatever. So, those kind of roles from an IT perspective have already been identified. Uh, is there a need for other people to come to office? I don't think so, because, you know, pretty much, you know, uh, if you look at uh, all, all the support functions that are happening at the corporate locations, whether it's Mumbai or Gurgaon that Sun Pharma operates in, or even globally, say our offices in New York or other places, pretty much, you know, we have shown that working from home is probably equally productive. So, you know, whether you really need to go to office or not is, 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 a, is a moot point now. So the last message that I would want to give is that it's important that we become addicted to what we are doing. I think uh, there was traction that people used to say, people were talking about bonding. I said, I, I started using the word addiction. Once you get addicted to somebody, uh, you will ensure that you do everything possible to make the other person successful. Uh, gentlemen, it was a pleasure talking to each one of you. Have a great day ahead. Uh, be safe, stay healthy and look forward to meeting you soon physically in the offices. Take care. Bye. Thank, Thank you. Thank you a lot.